and welcome back to MLB The Show 23. This will be the first of three videos today. This will be the first one. Then we'll have a little program. Oh, hit the wrong button here. A little program overlook. Just got to change it over to the MLB stuff because I hit the wrong button. We'll have, an, we'll have this video first, and we'll have a MLB The Show 23 uh, Diamond Dynasty Charisma Program Overlook, because that will be coming out later today at 4 o'clock my time, which will be 3 o'clock Eastern. And then the final video of the day, it will be the uh, review of Evil Dead Rise. So let's start this game. Just want to make sure... Yeah, okay, home and away. Yep, yeah, alright. We're going to be in Mid Bay Park, so let's start this thing. Mal on the mound today is Dylan Cease and Vammer Valdez. Interesting, uh, this game will be just a Jose Abreu, the former White Sox versus his former team. We welcome you all to Minute Maid Park here in Houston, Texas. It is the World Series champion, Houston Astros facing in the Chicago White Sox. This is a L AL West versus AL Central game. So it's great to be back in the state of Texas here today. On the mound for the Astros, it's Bamber Valdez. Of course, Justin Verlander, their Cy Young winner last season for the Astros, left him in the offseason to go, to go join the New York Mets. Starting off force for the White Sox, Tim Anderson. Anderson playing shortstop here today for the White Sox. Valdez is a very good pitcher here for the Astros. Ooh, 97 career home runs for the United States born Tim Anderson. He played during the World Baseball Classic over at second base. He did a fine job for Team USA. And that's a one-on-one -on -one early count there to Tim Anderson. Valdez is a nice pitcher. He's part of a very good starting rotation for the Astros. And Anderson fouls that one off. Astros, one of the best teams in the whole league, or maybe even the best team in the entire league. Pop up there by Anderson. They'll easily be caught by Pena. The rest of the White Sox lineup. Second is Andrew Benatendi. Third is Eboy Jimenez. Fourth is Luis Robert. Fifth is Andrew Vaughn. Sixth is Juan Marcata. Seventh is just Money Randall. Eighth is Elvis Andrews. And ninth is Oscar Colos. Very interesting lineup here for the White Sox. Benatendi's up now. No, that's outside. Andrew oh. Benatendi was kind of the big free agent signing for the White Sox in the offseason. And this will be very interesting to see what Benatendi does. Benatendi played last year for two different teams. That missed. That's a ball. There's a hiccup there. Benatendi won the gold glove in 2021. I believe he was over in Kansas City for that. Ball. And a 3-0 count to Benatendi. And will Benatendi's first at bat as a White Sox be a, a, raw, a walk? There's a 3-1 count there to Andrew Benatendi. The left fielder for the White Sox. Full and count. a full count to Ben Attendee with Eloy Jimenez on deck, the DH for the White Sox. Ben Attendee hits a ball, and that's going to be easily caught by Jordan Alvarez. And now here comes Eloy Jimenez, a dude that is due for a nice Eloy season this year at DH Jimenez. for the White Sox. Great curve there by Valdez. Jimenez used to play for the Chicago Cubs, but uh, ever since uh, 2017, he has uh -uh. been oh. a White Sox. One and one. And he's done really well with the White Sox. I gotta give him that. Oh, nice hit by Eloy Jimenez. The ball is carrying, and Chaz McCormick is able to locate it. So one, two, three, go the White Sox. World Series champions will come up the bat here. Brantley, Pena, out oh, and Abreu. Here's Dylan Cease, the ace of the White Sox. Was finished second in Cy Young votes last season. 
only losing out to, uh, to Jose, uh, Justin Verlander. Here's Michael Brantley. Brantley. Brantley, nice contact hitter against lefty, so it's good thing that he's on. And already a good strike thrown by Dylan Cease. Brantley was a former Silver Slug winner back, winner back in 2014. He was pretty good back then in those early 2010 ah. years in, in the middle part of 2010. Of course, the Astros didn't even win a World Series during that part until 2017. And they also won one in 2000, and they won one last season, which is 2022. 0-2 to Brantley. And there's the first ball thrown on Michael Brantley by Cease. Cease just came out of nowhere last season for the White Sox. And like I said, he finished second place in the Cy Young voting last year. And there's a weekly hit ground ball, and Cease will touch first base for the first out for the Astros. Line up here for the Astros, like I said, it's Pena and Abreu. Fourth is Jose Altuve. Fifth is Jordan Alvarez. Sixth is Kyle Tucker. Seventh is Alex Breckman. Eighth is Chaz McCormick. And ninth is the young catcher, Corey Lee. That's your lineup for the Astros. Ball. Here's Jeremy Pena, the World Series MVP. It was very tough for Jeremy Pena to come in and try to replace uh, Carlos Correa last year. Because Carlos Correa is an absolute legend in Houston, but Jeremy Pena came in and he absolutely dominated in the postseason for the Astros, winning oh. both the AL Championship MVP and World Series MVP. Two and one here, and a three and one count to Jeremy Pena with Jose Abreu up the bat. Abreu is a former White Sox, so it's interesting to see what will happen. And a walk to Jeremy Pena. And here's Jose Abreu, the former White Sox in 2020 American League MVP. That's the ball. Cease just making sure there that uh, Pena won't try to steal second because Pena's got some speed. One and one here to Abreu. Abreu has over 1,400 hits in his career. He's almost at 1,450. And there's a one and two with a beautiful slider by Cease. One and two here to Abreu. And a little tip foul there by Abreu. Minute Maid Park, definitely one of my favorite ballparks in the league. Great place to watch a game. Never been there, though. And help the middle. And an easy double play for the White Sox. That will definitely end the first inning. A beautiful double play there by the White Sox. Very easily able to ground that in that double play. Hit it right to the base of the glove of Cease. Here to top the second, Luis Robert up to bat. Luis Robert definitely, in my opinion, is the best hitter slash, you know, offensive player for the White Sox. He's a former Gold Glove winner back in 2020. And uh, Luis Robert, if he stays health, healthy, he'll have a great season. As there's a nice, perfect, perfect contact by Luis Robert. He gets on base in his first at-bat of the season. Here's Andrew Vaughn. Uh, yeah. Whatever I said the first All time. Right. So Andrew Vaughn, of course, uh, the young 24-year-old first baseman for the White Sox. He, uh, Andrew can, uh, no, well, he definitely is a nice fielder, and he's a former first-round pick for the White Sox. And knowing Andrew, he's not afraid to be in those clutch moments. Right. There's a one and two count here to Andrew Vaughn. And whoa, he hit him. Valdez hit Vaughn, and so that's two on for the White Sox. With Juan Marcata, the switch hitting third baseman. And Marcata hits it up there near the first baseline. Rounding to home, and he's out. Luis Robert tried to get to home plate with a nice throw out right field by Kyle Tucker. Gets him out at home. Kyle Tucker, one of the underrated players in the MLB, and he's got a nice arm. So that's how he was able to throw out 
Luis Robert. And so it remains nothing, nothing. One out left. Here's just Money Grandal, the catcher. Oh, Money right. Grandal had a really good 2020. Uh, and since then, he hasn't really been able to put together a great season. But uh, Grandal definitely has a chance to put his team up by at least a run. If he gets a good hit, that is. Oh. He was an all-star in 2015, 2019. He was kind of snubbed in 2020. He did have a good postseason, though, in 2020, oh. despite the White Sox getting eliminated in the uh, wild card series against the Oakland A's back when the A's were actually really good. Randall, and he hits it right to the glove of Abreu, and that's a double play, and now to finish out that at bat to the White Sox. White Sox got a little greedy at some points during that, and it cost them a run. And here comes Jose Altuve, former American League MVP. 2017, I believe, was the year Jose Altuve won the, the um, American League MVP. He has six silver sluggers in his name. Not a surprise there is Altuve is the, the best second baseman in all of the MLB. 0-2 oh, already to Jose Altuve. Ball Football there to Altuve. Strike. Really like Jose Altuve's Diamond Series uh, card in MLB The Show and the uh, Diamond Dynasty, and that's a strikeout by Dylan Cease. And here's your Don Alvarez, one of the best hitters in the in the league. If he gets a hold of a ball, that baby you can say is gone. He has tremendous power, and he's hit a lot of walk-off home runs. If you, remember, if you have seen the postseason, your Don strike. Alvarez hit a walk-off home run in game one of the AL Division Series against the Seattle Mariners. Your Don was a former rookie of the year, which makes sense. He's an absolute tank in the in the hitting box, and he's not a bad outfielder. He, he didn't work on it, but you know, he's not a bad outfielder. A two and two here to Jordan Alvarez. Yuri Gurriel usually will play left field for the uh, Astros, but due to him signing with the uh, Miami Marlins in the offseason, they put Jordan again back and left. And that's a strikeout by Dylan Cease, his second of the game. A nice curveball right to Jordan, and here comes Kyle Tucker, one of the most underrated players in the game. Zero balls, one strike. A great hitter, really nice outfielder. And he definitely has speed to him. No. Also, oh. really love his Diamond Dynasty one one. cards, too. Tucker was an all-star last year, which makes sense. The dude should be an all-star. He had a great year last oh. year. 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two one here to Kyle Tucker. Or King Tuck, as his nickname goes. Action. Nice fastball by Cease. So he's hired to hit on an, eight, on an ace like Dylan Cease. That's why this game is nothing, nothing. There's a foul ball there by Tucker. Next game that we have on schedule after this is over, we'll be heading over to San Diego as the Rockies will play the Padres in the San Diego Padres opening series. Another foul there by Tucker. Then after the Padres game, we'll have three other games here on opening day, and then we'll head over to the second day. Tucker just bobbles one up to uh, Elvis Andrews in the second. No score here Leading at the top of the third. The Elvis eight. Andrews. Elvis Andrews. Elvis Andrews, a former member of the Texas Rangers and Oakland A's. Yeah. Now he's a White Sox. He's one, he's, oh, he has over 1,900 hits. He's only three away from 2,000. Right. And like I said, he had those fantastic seasons over in Texas back in the mid-2000, and like right in the 2010s. Especially the, the seasons when the Rangers were really good, like 2010 to all the way up to 2017. The Rangers were great from those parts. 
And nice sinker by Valdez, and that's a strikeout for him. Here comes Oscar Colos, the young outfielder for the White Sox. Well, I gotta say, in real life, Oscar Colos is having a nice season for the White Sox. One and one here to the young one Oscar one. Colos. He was a international free agent by the White Sox. Two and one. Two and one there to Colos. Polos does have some really nice power to him, and he has some nice speed. Pop up there by Polos, right to Chaz McCormick. McCormick, if you remember the World Series, game number five, he had that fantastic catch he made against the Good Phillies that saved the game and helped the Astros Jim. win that game. If he didn't make that catch, then it was game over. It would have been a walk-off for the uh, Phillies. That's the ball. One here, Tim Anderson won the 2019 batting title. It's not a surprise, Tim Anderson's a nice hitter. He's no right fielder, but he's a nice hitter. In the last season, wouldn't really say that he was, but that's just because he was battling some injuries. That's something the White Sox have had lots of problems with the last season, the season beforehand. They've been dealing with injuries. And this White Sox team is really good with it, when they're fully healthy. And when they're not just blowing games or have a bad inconsistent play. But last year, they were just hammered with so many injuries. It's not even funny. That's why they didn't even finish in their division. They they finished third in the division. And that's the division that they could easily win. That's the uh, end of the top of the third. Good pitches by Valdez. Out comes Alex Breckman. In 2019, Alex Breckman finished second place in the AL MVP voting, right behind That's Mike Trout. And Breckman definitely had a case that year to say that he got snubbed of the MVP. He had an amazing second half of that season where he just tore it right on. He was popping in every game. And the one and one here to Breckman. And the one here to Alex Breckman. Hit by Breckman, oh, that's a foul. Two and two here to Alex Breckman for Dylan Cease. This will be pitch number 38 for Cease. And he's been very good. And Breckman, and a good catch over there at right field by Oscar Kolos. Here's Chaz McCormick. McCormick, you know, he's not really an offensive player. He's more of a defensive player. He's got some good speed to him. Whoa, what a knuckle curveball right there by Dylan Cease. That was brutal. That thing caught right near the top of the zone for Dylan Cease. McCormick fouls, and it's a 0-2 here, Chaz McCormick. Like I said, later on today, you'll see another video of that will be the show 23. Now just go over the newest program that's coming out and the roster update as well. Because we do have a roster update coming out like you said, at 4 o'clock my time, 3 o'clock Eastern time. One, and if two. you're in the Pacific time zone, that's 12 o'clock. Going to be a great update. They'll be adding some more new players into this update. They're going to be updating the rank, the uh, ratings of players. And they'll be adding a guy like Fernando Tatis Jr. back into the game because uh, his suspension is over for those PDTs he did, which who knows what really he did with those. He was saying that he was using the treat, uh, Wayne Worm, but uh, who knows. McCormick gets walked by Cease. That's the second walk of the day by Cease, and here the young Corey Lee. Lee is definitely the better offensive player when it comes to the two catchers. But uh, Martin El Donato is the better defensive player. Lee, a former first rounder in 2019 the year that the Astros went all the way to the World Series, but lost to the Cinderella story, Washington Nationals. And ever since 2019, the Nationals have done nothing. Because <laughs> they lost basically almost every player that's on that championship team. I think other than two players, and those are two guys that are either, one of them's injured, and the other one is stuck in like triple A. 
And Lee doesn't go there, so it's a one and two here. Corey Lee. Bob the third here for Cease. Cease for the strikeout. No, and that's a, just a foul ball there by Corey Lee. Before the game started, we had a little uh, banner review, banner reveal for the Astros. Great to see that for them. And Lee is just going to pop that one up right over to Oscar Polos, and there's two outs in the inning. And back up is Michael Brantley. Brantley got uh, well, grounded out right to the cease there. There's a good fastball by Dylan Cease. So ever since 2018, Michael Brantley's been with oh, the Astros. I completely there. forget who Brantley was with before the Astros. I feel like it was Arizona for some reason. I don't know why. Hey. Cease is making sure that Chaz McCormick does not steal center base. Like I said, McCormick has some speed to him, so he's not afraid to steal. Brantley hits a ball, and that's going to get caught. What speed shown off by Luis Robert. Out at center field, nice catch. Right now, the Astros have no hits in this game. Compared to the White Sox, they have two. Here's Ben Attendi up to bat. One ball, nice ball here. Yeah, Ben Attendi. He was in Kansas City last season. He went over to the... Uh, Yankees the trade deadline, and the now he is a member of the White Sox. Three oh, and O oh to Andrew Benatendi. Oh, ben oh, Michael Brantley is with Cleveland. That's who he was with. Michael Brantley is with the Cleveland Guardians. They're known as the Indians back then. Brantley gets a piece of the one there, even though really he should not have even swung at that pitch because he would have been walked. Three and two, full count to Benatendi, and that's nope. a walk oh, cool. to Andrew Benatendi. That'll bring up Eloy Jimenez. This is definitely a good chance for the White Sox to try to take a lead here. Eloy Jimenez. Like, like I said, he signed out the Dominican Republic, went to the Cubs, and they went to White Sox. Oh, try to steal. No ball, two strikes. And he's out. Ben Attendi tried to steal second base, but Corey Lee threw a nice uh, ball right over to uh, Jose Altuve to get that out. Menez trying to get ahead here. Lee, that was a good catch by Lee because Valdez threw a pretty high ball, and he was able to grab it and snag it and throw it right to Jose One, Altuve. Two to get Ben Attendi out from stealing second base. I think Ben Attendi jumped a little too late too. Two and two. Here's a two and two count to Eloy Jimenez. Jimenez hits a ball and that's gonna be over here to short and Pena throws the first from the out. Here comes Luis Robert. He got a hit in the second but he got caught. <laughs> He got thrown out of home plate at the second as well. Robert, like I said, that dude is really good. When full, when he's healthy, that dude just rakes hits. And he's a great power hitter. He's got some really good speed to him as well. Oh, almost won there, but that's a ball. Luis Robert. If he, if when he's healthy, that dude's a bona fide all-star. That's a foul. And, oh, I thought that was a foul tip, but no, it's a strikeout. Just went to the catcher's glove. Bomb the fourth, Jeremy Pena. Cease has been really good on the mound for the White Sox. He is not, well, <laughs> Cease has thrown a no-hitter so far. Who would have thought that we would see a no-hitter so far in this game by Dylan Cease? No balls, two strikes. Let's see if Payne can get the first hit for the Astros in this game here. They got a really good part of the lineup here for the Astros. Oh. They got Payne, they got Jordan, and Altuve, and Abreu. 
you know, a whole bunch of good at-bats coming up for the Astros. Pania gets one to drop, and that's the first hit of the game for the Astros. Good, good throw by Oscar Colas. Here's Jose Abreu. A chance to get some run support maybe on the board, but uh-oh, the second to first and a double play. An easy double play for the Chicago White Sox. A good pitch thrown by Dylan Cease, caught Jose Abreu off guard, and a beautiful double play by the White Sox. Here comes Altuve. 1-0 here to Altuve. Altuve definitely won another MVP this season. In real life, he definitely won't be able to because of the uh, injury, the injury that he has. Altuve was just safe at first base because that went off with the glove of the first baseman, Andrew Vaughn. And here's Jordan Alvarez. Cease so got the strikeout on Jordan. The question is, will he get it again? Will he grind him out or fly him out? Who knows? And an own two already to Jordan Alvarez. And that right there, that you saw on the screen is the thing that hurts. The Dodgers used to have Jordan Alvarez, but they traded him, or no, they just let him walk. They let Jordan walk to the Astros, which is insane. Because look at what Jordan is right now. Jordan's one of the best pure hitters in the game. Ball. And can you imagine if Jordan was on the one, Dodgers two. today? That'd be insane. I know, the Dodgers' uh, stupid minds let him walk. Two, two. Now look at the Dodgers right now this season. They're uh, looking like they might not win their division this year. Erdogan fouls one off there. On the fourth, two outs. And Cease, and a hit by Jordan Alvarez, but that's just a big time fly out to Oscar Colos. And that's gonna end the fourth inning. Still no score in this game, but the Astros finally got some hits on the board. And here's Andrew Vaughn. Let's see what Andrew Vaughn has in store. He was hit by a pitch in the second inning. Vaughn, that's just gonna be a fly out. He didn't really get good enough control on that ball. And there's already the first out. Here's your own, here's uh, your own Marcata. Marcata had a a great 2019 and 2020 seasons That's for the ball. White Sox. And he's a nice switch hitting third baseman, but ever since 2021, he's just fallen off. And hopefully maybe this season, uh, Juan Marcada could uh, go back to those years that he was really good. 2-1. His uh, Marcada is a good player. It's just that he just is making dumb decisions half the time he's at the plate. And that's what's killing him. Two and two here to Marcotta. And another foul by your own Marcotta. Wow, wow. Oh, whoa, Kyle Tucker went for a diving catch, but he didn't get it, but wow, how did you own Marcotta? Get a hit off of that. How? Out of the zone and everything, and Juan Marcotta is two for two on the day for the White Sox. Tucker tried to go for a dive and play, but he didn't get it. He's just Money Grandal. Grandal's a good defensive catcher. He was really good as a hitter, but uh, that's time going away, and he's not fast at all. You got to give it up to your own Marcotta for somehow able to hit that sinker. Randall, oh, gets it past the glove of Breckman. And right now, the White Sox have two men on base here with only one out in this inning. And here's Elvis Andrews with a chance to drive in a run for the White Sox. Let's see what Andrews can do here. Not surprised that the fans are booing Elvis Andrews here just because of all those times he's tortured them with the uh, Texas Rangers. 
Andrews, and that's just going to be a fly out. Yeah, I don't see them tagging up on that play. And out comes Oscar Kolos with a chance to drive a run in for the White Sox. This will be big for the young man if he can drive in a run for the White Sox. There's only one here to Kolos. This is Kolos' MLB debut today. Kolos, that's a foul. 0-2 to Oscar Kolos. How does Oscar Kolos do a piece of that pitch? Still 0-2 to Oscar Kolos. Kolos hits a ball. Kolos, can you get to first base? No, he's not able to get there in time, though. Ends at the top of the fifth inning. Again, the Astros are just able to dodge another interesting inning. Here's Kyle Tucker. Still nothing, nothing game. No runs have been scored. It makes sense. These two teams have some great pitching. Ball, Ooh, just a ball there for uh, Kyle Tucker. 2-0 to Kyle Tucker. Both the, oh wow, 3-0 now to, uh, to Kyle Tucker by Cease with Brickman up to bat next. And a walk to Kyle Tucker. Here's Alex Breckman. Fans getting hyped up here in the stands for Alex Breckman. Oh, one swing off the bat of Breckman, and this thing is never mind. There's a fly out by Alex Breckman. Like I said, it makes sense that this game's a very low scoring game right now. Both teams have some good pitching in their squads, and both have good bullpens. The uh, White Sox, I gotta say, they, they got lucky because uh, their closer One ball, no strike. was uh, had cancer in the begin the season, and uh, he just came back, and now he's announced cancer free, which is huge. I believe that was Lucas G. Lito for the White Sox. McCormick fouls that one off. Liam Hendricks, that's the guy. Okay. So Liam Hendricks for the White Sox. And uh, Kyle Tucker got the second base off of the wild pitch. So Liam Hendricks, the usual closer for the White Sox, he's cancer free now, so they don't have to worry about uh, trying to get a new closer. So that's uh, good news for Liam Hendricks. Chaz Cormick, two and two here for him. McCormick, and just Easy throw there by Elvis Andrews. Kyle Tucker's at third base right now. This is the closest the Astros have had trying to run in. Lee has a chance to drive in a run for the Astros, and that'll be the first run of the game if he does it. Good pitch, good slider by Cease. 0-1 here to Corey Lee. And 0-2 already for Dylan Cease. Cease, he get another out, and him and the White Sox will escape this scary at bat, but no, they will not. Corey Lee is able to get Kyle Tucker in the home, and the Astros take one nothing lead. And so a double for the young Corey Lee, and the Astros are on the board first. Here's Michael Branton. Brantley, and he's just gonna fly that one out, I guess. Yeah, Kolos catch that, but that, hey, but there's a run on the board. Corey Lee for the Astros drives in a run to make it one nothing for the Houston Astros. Here we go, top assist, the top of the sixth inning, Tim Anderson. What will Tim Anderson do? Anderson, I mean, one one uh, swing of the bat by Anderson. This thing's tied up. Anderson has amazing power against lefties. So Val Flamber Valdez has to be careful. And 
against Anderson's power. I mean, there is some really good power bats in the uh, White Sox lineup. The only thing is they just got to make contact with the ball in a good spot. It's out the 6-2-2 here, Tim Anderson. Oh, and like I said right there, Anderson all he has to do is make perfect contact, and that's perfect contact. That baby is gone. A 402-foot home run by Tim Anderson, and this game is tied. Tim Anderson has tied this game. Like I said, Anderson all he needs is good contact and the ball is gone, and he just showed it off right there. That was a no-doubter by Tim Anderson. Oh yeah, that was a perfect hit. He, he could tell immediately the ball was gone. That bait was hit. Right off of the high heat sign. And it's 1-1 thanks to Tim Anderson. Benatendi, and that's a foul ball. So there you go, Tim Anderson ties the game at one. Like I said, there are some great power hitters here for the White Sox. Nope. All they oh. have to do is just make good contact. The ball's one. gone. Well, Tim Anderson just showed it off. One and one to Benatendi. Two and one now to Benatendi. Two balls, one three. I wonder if the uh, seventh inning, we're going to see some uh, bullpen arms come in. Like I said earlier, both uh, teams have good bullpens. Two and two to Benatendi. Benatendi, and that's another foul ball by Andrew Benatendi. Looks like we're less than an hour away from the new update for MLB The Show 23, which will have the roster updates and all the new promo uh, program stuff. Uh, like I said, I'll do that later. Strikeout for Andrew Benatendi. That's the fourth strikeout of the day for Vander Valdez. Here's Eloy Jimenez. Just like Tim Anderson, he has great amount of power in his back. He just needs to make good contact. Just like what Tim Anderson did. So here we go. 0 and 1. 0 and 2 now to Eloy Jimenez. And Valdez, and a hit by uh, Eloy Jimenez, just foul ball. So an own two to Eloy Jimenez here. Jimenez, and there's another foul ball. So that's the contact problem right there. These hit, uh, White Sox like to hit a lot of foul balls. There's One and ball. two. One and two here to Eloy Jimenez. And Jimenez hits it up the middle, and that's a base hit for Eloy Jimenez. And so the the, the uh, go-ahead run is on first base for the White Sox. With Luis Robert up to bat, that's a great guy to have up to bat. With a runner in score, that's with a runner, ball. with a go-ahead run at first base. Let's see what Luis Robert has in store. One and one here to Luis Robert. Valdez has now thrown up to 90 pitches. He's allowed more hits than uh, Dylan Cease. And Robert, the ball drops. Luis Robert. And Eloy gets the third base, and so there's runners on the corners for the Chicago White Sox. With Andrew Vaughn up the bat. All Andrew Vaughn has to do is hit a ball far enough so it can be a sacrifice fly, and the White Sox will take a lead. But well, really, all he has to do is get a hit. Just make sure that he doesn't hit it to the uh, field of Kyle Tucker, because Tucker's got a heck of an arm. 2-0 and to Andrew Vaughn right now. The bullpen right now for the Astros has, uh, has Staken and Nears. Hector Nears. Yeah, Hector Nears and Ryan in the bullpen. Or Rian, actually. It's Rian for the uh, second guy in the bullpen. One. Two and one here to Andrew Vaughn. Yeah, I believe a Valdez gets up a run here. Yeah, that's a foul. And, uh, 
Robert has to go back to first. Like, here we go, two and two to Andrew Vaughn. Vaughn, like I said, has a chance to drive and run. And a strikeout for Vander Valdez. It's his fifth of the day, and that brings up Juan Marcada, a guy who has two, who's two for two on the day. Marcada, oh my goodness, he almost hit the umpire. Marcada was a former, like I say, he was a former member of the Boston Red Sox, and the old Marcada has just scored a run, and the White Sox have the lead. Yon Marcada is a perfect three for three today. So there you go, Yon Marcada drives in the run to make it 2-1 White Sox. And here's his money, Grendahl. And Grendahl has a chance to improve the lead to maybe three and one, four and one, or maybe five and one. <laughs> oh and two here at Grendahl. And a strikeout. That's the end of the top of the sixth inning, but it is 2-1 Chicago White Sox. Now the big boys are up for the Astros. Pena, Abreu, Jordan, and, and, uh, and Altuve. They're up to bat. Pena was also a gold glove winner the uh, last year, too. So 2-1 here for the White Sox, thanks to a own Marcada single. Right. Two runs were scored, and that's six by the White Sox. Tim Anderson's home run, and then Yon Marcotta drove in a run. It's big. That's a huge one there for the White Sox. There's a hit by Pena, and that's going to be. And the ball is going to be uh, flown out there to Luis Robert. He's had a good game, too, for the White Sox, Luis Robert. Cease and Abreu, here we go. Abreu's had a tough day because both of his hits have grounded out in the double plays. No, that missed. One and one. Two, one. Two and one here to Abreu. My microphone's all right there for the headset. Three and one to Jose Abreu with uh, Jose Altuve up next. And a walk, just barely a walk to Jose Abreu. And so here's Altuve. Let's see what Altuve has in store. I'm Altuve, I want to get on base. Don't want to strike out. And you don't want to get into a double play. White Sox now have Renato Lopez and uh, Aaron Balmer, or Aaron Bummer in the bullpen, just in case. 2-0 to Jose Altuve. Maybe uh, Dylan Cease wants to walk Altuve so we can bring uh, Jordan Alvarez up the bat because he's had a good uh, pitching performance since Jordan. Uh-oh. The one, the two, double play by the White Sox again. Now end the inning. Another double play by the Chicago White Sox. That's the third of the day for them. Still 2-1 White Sox. Here is Nick. Here's Hector. Here is. Hector Neres. Elvis Andrews. Here's Elvis Andrews. And Andrews hit one in the very top of the zone. That's going nowhere. Unless that drops somehow. No, nope. and Ch caught by Chad Corbin. Up next for the White Sox, the right fielder, Oscar, Oscar Kolos. Kolos. 
see what Cole Laws will do later. So he's made his debut today. May hopefully he can get maybe a hit today. That'd be nice to see the young Cole Laws get a hit. White, White Sox did so much damage in that one seventh out. inning. They had four hits, I believe, in that one inning. Either four or five hits in that one inning. And a foul there, and a one-on-one -on -one count to Oscar Cole Laws. And just swinging a miss there, one, one and two, two to Cole Laws. Tim Anderson's up to bat next. We all remember what uh, Tim Anderson did in the top of the sixth inning. He blasted a home run. Ball. That went 4-0-2. And, and it went off a billboard sign, too. Three and two, oh, four yeah. count pull loss with Tim Anderson up next. And a strikeout for Hector here. And here's Tim Anderson. Anderson, yeah, he's more of a contact guy against righties. And he's definitely a power hitter against lefties. So let's see what Tim Anderson now can do. He had that home run in the sixth inning. No, ball. So because of that home run by Anderson, that puts him up to uh, 98 career home runs, which now he's only two away from 100. And there's a 2-0 count to Tim Anderson. And now a 3-0 to Tim Anderson with Ben Attendee on deck if they're able to walk Anderson. Nice splitter. That was a beautiful splitter. Got it right near the zone. That's perfect. That's a perfect pitch. And Anderson, and that's probably going to be caught by at your dawn, and that'll end the top of the seventh. 2 1, still White Sox. And here's your dawn, Alvarez. Dylan Cease is still in the game. Ooh, that's just a ball. Jordan's had a bad day against Dylan Cease. Cease has struck him out twice. And now he grounds him out. Right to Elvis Andrews. Okay. Turned the first out of the inning. And here's Kyle Tucker. Last time Tucker was up, he was walked, and that helped lead the Astros to grab their, uh, their one and only run of the first uh, of this game. Yeah. Cool. Nice knuckle curve. One on one to Kyle Tucker. Whoa. That's a ball. Interesting fastball by Cease. Cease now going to be up to 98 pitches here with the next pitch thrown. Ah, Whoa, two. just on the line there. So now we got a two and two to Kyle Tucker. Now a full count to Kyle Tucker with Alex Breckman up next. And Tucker strikes out. Tucker checked his swing, but he went too far. And here's Alex Breckman. Cease now to 100 pitches up to the triple digits. But he's thrown a good game. He's walked, I think, yeah, he's walked more people than, uh, than hits today. Breckman is two for four against Dylan, two for five in his career against Dylan Cease. And now Breckman gets a hit. Breckman's going to definitely go for a double. Pull off the throw, but uh, that's a double for Alex Breckman. And yeah, let's like the White Sox pitching coach will come out, and I believe Cease will be done for the day. Your attention, yep. Please. Now, and here comes. Up. Uh, Reynado Lopez. So here's Chaz McCormick. That hit, that's the ball. Uh, yeah. Ray, uh, yeah, Ray Renato Lopez. But 
McCormick's gonna fly that one out. So that'll end that inning. So the end of the seventh inning has happened. It is still 2-1 to the Chicago White Sox. Is that the White Sox at the end of that inning brought up with a, their one of their bullpen arms, Reynado Lopez. So here's Ben Attendee. And ten D's over two, but he's got and he's been walked. Oh and one. No, that's out. So here we go. Thirty-nine thousand people are at this game. Oh, and they have the middle one, Benatendi. Pena got a good speed on that one and a nice throw by Jeremy Pena. Now batting, designated hitter, Aloy Jimenez. Here's Eloy Jimenez. Ball. Wow, that's a ball. Okay. One ball, no strike. Interesting there. I'm surprised that was a ball. So Hector Neres came in the seventh inning. He's thrown a good, one, one. he's thrown a couple of good pitches in this. And he hasn't let up a hit yet. Which is good for Hector. And a one and two one, to two, Eloy Jimenez. And a two oh. and two here to Eloy Jimenez. Two, two. And they're saying that he wins. That's a strikeout for Hector Neres. And here's Luis Robert, who's had a nice day for the White Sox. He's two for three on this day already. Whoa, foul. You know what, 92 off the bat. Robert. And a 3 oh, 1 to Luis that. Robert. They don't want to walk Luis Robert. Nope. And it's a pop. I think that might be caught by Jose Abreu. No, that's a foul because that goes off the mesh. Full count here to Luis Robert. That's a walk. They have walked to Luis Robert. And here's Andrew Vaughn. Number 25, Andrew Vaughn. Let's see what Vaughn has to do here in this inning. Vaughn, Vaughn's had a weird day. He's been hit by a pitch. He's struck oh, out. Right. And so who knows what the next trifecta, the next thing will be for Andrew Vaughn. Maybe he gets a hit, complete the trifecta. One and one here one to one. buy Vaughn. Astros, they got to be uh, thinking that soon. You might want to score a run Three. here since we're down 2 1. I mean, that's the top of the eighth inning. They only got the eighth, the bottom of the eighth, and the bottom of the ninth to work with. Even though the bottom of the ninth inning, they need guys like Jordan and Jose. Uh oh! Vaughn broke his bat. So we got to go get a new one. Don't see that many days, but sometimes that'll happen. 1 and 2 to Vaughn. And there's 2 that's 2. Ooh, big yawn. Big yawn there. Vaughn gets a hit. And there we go. He completes the trifecta. Being hit by a pitch, he uh, strikes out and he gets a hit. So runners on first and second here for the White Sox with Yon Marcata. Yon Marcata's on a perfect day. Three for three. He's had an RBI. And he's just on fire. That's the ball. There's a ball there by Hector Neres to Yon Marcada. Yon Marcada definitely a reason why the White Sox have this lead. And that's just a foul by Yon Marcada. 
And, and hey, I think if he got that to not be a foul, uh, he would reach first. Kata, that's a foul. What a two to old Marcata. Another foul by Owen Marcata. Marcata's trying to tire out Hector Neres. So he throws him a good pitch. And no, they're saying he's not go there. Hector's kind of saying that he did, but no, he didn't. So it's a two and two here to Yon Marcata. A lot of orange in the stands today, but there's a couple White Sox fans, like you see in the gray sweaters and the black unis, which I like those uniforms that the White Sox have. Especially the South Side uniforms, really like those ones. That's uh, why I named one of my signature moves in WWE 2K series, uh, the South Side, because I'm a fan of the Chicago White Sox. And those uniforms, and there we go. Yon Marcata is four for four today. And it's now 3-1 Chicago. Next to Chicago. So it's four for four day for you, Marcotta, and they take him out for uh, Ryan Stanky. Stanky, yeah. Ron Stanek. Interesting, Ron Stanek. 0 oh 1. Marcotta does more damage. I love that little uh, part of the game they added that. So here we go, bottom the eight. Corey Lee up to bat. He is the only RBI for the Astros of today. Oh, that was a pitch right down the middle. That's not good. There's uh, Dusty there, the manager of the Astros. Dusty, he, he used to play for the San, Fr San Francisco Giants. There we go, back in the day. And he's one of those managers that we all the fans wanted to win a World Series as a manager. He finally did last year. That's in, ball. So one and two here to Corey Lee by Renato Lopez. That's a ball, so it's two and two to the to league. Run. Oh, that's a strikeout by Renato Lopez. Now that's the designated hitter, Michael Brentley. One and one. That's a hit by Michael Brantley. He gets on base. But now here comes the problem. The Astros have grounded out the three double plays today. Here's Jamie Pena. See what Pena can do. Hey, a, a one swing on the bat by Jeremy Pena. The game is tied. He has the power to do so. Pena, and that's a foul. 0-2 to Jeremy Pena here. And there we go, right there. The Astros are grounded out to three double plays. They gotta stop that. If they don't, they're just going to shoot themselves in the foot One so many times. Strike. Pushes will they ground up to four double plays right here. 
two and two to Jeremy Pena. Uh, Pena's father, Carlos Pena, he used to play in the MLB for the Rays. And Pena gets a hit up the middle. And runners on first and second for the Astros. No, no, uh oh, Kevin, oh, Braveman's in the game now. Kendall Braveman. Oh, and here's Jake Myers, the pitch runner. Jose Abreu has had a terrible day. He's grounded out in two double plays. But he has a chance to, oh, never mind. The second, the first, another double play by the White Sox. And so Kendall Graveman again helps the White Sox get another double play and to escape another inning. That's four double plays by the Astros today that they've grounded out into. And so here we go, top of the ninth, Elvis Andrews. So White Sox are up by two. Could they even maybe go up by by uh, three? Who knows? Well, one and oh. So Phil Meaton and Seth Martinez are in the bullpen, just in case. Outside, ball. To no to Andrews by uh, Stankin. Andrews, that's a foul. He officially passed the one hour mark here in the uh, stream today in the video. Well, really, an hour, an hour, two minute mark. But uh, this has been a good game to watch. Like I said, defensive game, because these two teams have good pitching, both starting and bullpen. And that's a strikeout. For Stanton. Here's Austin Colons. Can Austin Colons finally collect his first hit in the MLB? No, that's out. Or you never know, he might collect his first walk in the MLB. Who knows? Uh -uh. 2 0 oh. Colons. Nice, nice splitter by Stankin. And now it's a 2 1 count to Coloss. If I'm the Astros, you do not want to let any more runs score for the White Sox. And then if you're the Astros, then you have to think of a game plan for how you're going to try to tie the game up. Just keep grounding, up, grounding out in so many double plays. It's not even funny. Coloss will follow that one off. Coloss, and well, he got a good hit, but just fielded it really nicely by Jose Altuve. So here's Tim Anderson, the guy that started off the explosion of offense in that sixth inning by the White Sox. Wow. So 1 0 to Anderson. Anderson, his only hit of the day was that home run. No, it wasn't the sixth, it was the seventh. Yeah, it was that home run on the top of the seventh by Tim Anderson. No, that's up. That just started that insane offense by the White Sox to help them go up 2-1. And now they're up by now they're up 3-1 thanks to that Yon Marcada single no, in the uh, top of the eighth inning. But like I said, he's had a, a fantastic day, Yon Marcada has for the White Sox. 3-0 to Anderson and a walk to Tim Anderson. Here comes Andrew Benintendi. 
Mantendi is yet to get a hit yet today, but he can walk. No, he's dead. It's like Anderson's trying to steal second. I don't know if that's really the smartest idea to do that, but who knows. Runner, runner, runner. Anderson trying to nope. steal, oh. and he's caught. One ball, no so here we go, bottom of the ninth inning. Here comes Liam Hendricks. The man who is uh, cancer free now. Here comes Jose Altuve. Let's see if Liam Hendricks can close down this game. Just like how he closed out cancer. Altuve hits a ball. And that's just a fly out. And that's already the first out of the inning. Here comes Jordan Alvarez. He's had a terrible day. He has struck out twice and he grounded it out once. Let's see if he can do better than Sleem Hendricks. Jordan! Oh, nice play by Elvis Andrews. Nice play, little dive there, small dive by Elvis Andrews. Nice little dive by Andrews. Woo! Nice sliding play. And so here comes Kyle Tucker. Could be the last out of this game. Hendricks has thrown two pitches and both were outs. Tucker will foul that one off. Old one to Kyle Tucker. Astros down by two here in the bottom of the ninth inning. They're down to their last out. And a 1-1 one, one. One to Kyle Tucker by Hendricks. Going two and oh. one to Tucker. Two one. Whoa, nice two. curve. Nice number curve, and here we go. It's two and two. One more strike, and the game is over. Ooh, wow. Yeah, somehow Tucker got a piece of that slider, so it still remains two two. And a full count Round to Kyle two. Tucker with Alex Breckman up on deck. So if you watch them, there's still Alex Breckman to go through. Tucker, and that's another foul ball. Seven pitches have been thrown at this at bat, Ball and there's a walk. Kyle Tucker's been walked, and so that brings up Alex Breckman. Let's see if Breckman can do something big here. Ooh, nice top of the pitch strike there by Hendricks. 0-1 to Breckman. Alex Breckman swings. The ball is carrying, and that's the out. And that's the end of the game. The Chicago White, White Sox take a game away from the Astros here on opening day. They've just spoiled the uh, World Series uh, champions opening day today. They revealed the banner and everything, but no, the White Sox win 3-1. Cease got the win, Valdez got the loss, and Hendricks got the save. So the White Sox lead 1-0 in this series. Player of the game was Dylan Cease for the White Sox. Six, he went six and a half innings. Allowed four hits, got three strikeouts. Wow. The Houston Astros left nine runners on base. Oh. I don't think Dylan Cease should have got player of the game. It should have been Yon Marcata. He went four for four and he had two RBIs. That's disgusting. You get four for four and two RBIs and yet you don't get player of the game? Wow. So there we go. That's the end of that game here. Tough loss to the Astros, but they had that second game they can still go and win. We have Christian Javier on the mound and for the White Sox it will be Lance Lynn. So next game, like I said, will not be uh will will be the uh Rockies versus Padres. I'll just show you what they're like right here. So for the Rockies, it'll be uh, Marquez on there. And for the Padres, it'll be Joe Musgrove. Rockies, definitely a team that's not going to be great this year. Terrible power and speed and pitching, definitely pitching-wise. Even though they got a really good home record, they like they like they love the play at home. It makes sense though because their stadium is the easiest stadium to hit a home run in. 
just going to go over uh, their little lineups that they have for them in this game, just so you guys can see. So you have Jonathan Diaz at center for them. They're batting first. Charlie Blackman will be the second. CJ Chrome at first. That dude is great. I definitely expect CJ Chrome to get a Ross to get a uh, ratings update. Chris Bryant's over at right field, the former Chicago Cub. Ryan McMahon at second. There's Alan uh, T. Trey Trey Joe, yeah Trey Joe. Jaredson Profar, the former um, Padre at left. Uh, Lanzas Diaz. A catcher and the rookie, Ezekiel Tovar, will be at short. Surprised that no Randall Lynchick's playing, but that's fine. And for San Diego Padres, like I said, Joe Musgrove will be on the mound. Now, this is without Tatis. I expect Tatis will play the game against the Rockies because he'll be added on the roster update. So, right now, without Tatis, they have Xander Bogarts, Jay Cronenworth, Juan Soto, Manny Machado, Matt Carpenter, Nelson Cruz, Adam Angel, Austin Nola, and Hassan Kim in the lineup. They'll probably get rid of Adam once Tatis comes back. But right there, that will be the next game. It will be Rockies Padres, Gabriel Marquez against uh, Joe Musgrove. Or no, it's German Marquez. Yeah, German Marquez against Joe Musgrove. We'll see you then for that game. Of course, make sure to stay tuned for the two other videos that are planned for today. We'll see you next time.